Right, so God of War Ragnarok for PC just launched. And uh, as you saw there on the screen, I actually want to show you, it does prompt you for a Sony PSN account. It's not mandatory, however, because the moment you click continue, the screen disappears, right? Um, so I just wanted to show you that, that even though it does say that a PSN account is mandatory, you can bypass it. And uh, well, here we are in game without uh, a PSN account. All right, so we'll be testing the RX 4070 Ti Super with a 14600K F CPU. Everything is in the top left-hand corner there. That is paired with 32 gigabytes of DDR5, 6400 megatransfers per second CL32 memory. Now, before we get into the benchmarks, I just wanna show you setting it quickly. It does support FSR 3.1, meaning you can use DLSS with FSR frame generation. But for now, we just will be testing at uh, DLAA native. We're on the ultra preset at 1080p. Um, I'm using a capture card for all my benchmark recordings, and that's why it says that uh, the refresh rate is 59 hertz. All right, so let's have a look at our benchmarks here at 1080p on the ultra preset game runs pretty well so far i know i'm really sorry this uh, this is the only area i'll be testing in for now i need to prepare for a firewall migration that starts in the next three hours so i'm just going to be doing a very short benchmark run here then we'll test some resolution scanning see what uh, dlss can bring to the table here for us and then we'll do some preset scanning and then also one other thing FSR frame generation boosts the frame rate by a lot more than what DLSS frame generation does. So if you are looking for a higher frame rate, then just use FSR frame generation, but I'll get you that anyway. Right, so we are getting around 170 frames per second at 1080p on the ultra preset. I don't think we we need to enable DLSS or anything here, so I'm just going to enable FSR or DLSS 3 frame generation first, then FSR frame generation, and then we'll move on to 1440p. All right, so I just enabled DLSS 3 frame generation, still at native resolution DLAA, and we we did not see a change in the frame rate at all. And this is what other people have seen as well. For some reason, DLSS frame generation just does not seem to work in this game. So let's move over to FSR frame generation quickly. And now using the exact same settings with FSR frame generation, you can see we are getting around 250 frames per second. So it boosts our frame rate by around 80 frames per second, whereas the LSS3 frame generation does nothing, not even at 1080p. Usually when it does nothing, it's because the GPU is starting to run out of resources. So typically on an RX 4070 at 4K, you'll start seeing uh, diminishing returns. But for some reason, this is not doing anything even at 1080p, right? So I think, I'm not going to be testing much at 1080p. The game runs pretty well at 1080p. Even through the whole intro sequence, there was not a single stutter. So that's definitely very good. All right, let's move on to 1440p. I actually need to uh, uh, restart the game and change my desktop resolution just to make sure that I get accurate results here. All right, so we're back at 1440p, still on the ultra preset DLAA, so native resolution and uh, no frame generation. Uh, no, neither, we don't have FSR3 frame generation nor DLSS3 frame generation enabled. And this is actually pretty good. I must say we're getting a high refresh rate experience here, 130, 140 frames per second. Game looks plenty good, I must say. And uh, without any upscaling, uh, compared to another Sony game that recently released, this is uh, I'm I'm getting pretty much double the frame rate to what I did in that other game. Not that you can compare the games, right? It's different engines, whatever. But uh, this performance is actually very very solid. So 134 frames per second. And as I said, I'm I'm really sorry. I know this is a very small area. This might not be the same performance you'll be seeing throughout the whole game, but. Uh, I wish I had more time to do a more proper analysis. Unfortunately, real life does get in the way sometimes, right? All right, so 134 frames per second there. Our 1% lows are sitting at 114 and our 0.1% lows are sitting at 107, which is, I think it's pretty good, right? So I want to actually just going, I'm just going to get rid of the, oh, that's kick going to get rid of the lows and then I'm going to test just DLSS scaling here and then we'll do preset scanning as well. I think let's start with preset scaling first and see if you actually gain a little bit extra performance by dropping down presets, right? All right, so I just dropped this down to the high preset and in this specific spot, we were getting 141 frames per second. Now we're getting 151 frames per second. So we gain 10 frames per second, right? And at these frame rates, it's like 5% or 7%, whatever. Um, 
but it's it's really I'm, I'm not going to say it's not necessary i'm one of those that do like a, a higher frame rate a very decent high refresh rate experience and this gives it uh, to me right but i'll i'll probably be playing on the ultra preset with the lss to quality we'll get to that testing right now and then dropping down to the medium preset, we actually see a 20 frames per second boost here, which is actually pretty good. We are still very GPU limited here. We, our GPU is sitting at 100% GPU usage and our power draw is sitting at around 241, which is pretty much par for the course for this GPU at 1440p in my experience anyway. It's only at 4K where it, it's start, it starts to creep up to that 285 limit uh, or watt limit. Anyway, so 172 frames per second here, pretty decent. And the game still looks pretty good i'd say and then on the low preset we are getting 225 frames per second and still very gp limited yeah actually our gp power is slightly more for some reason anyway so it's really not that demanding of a game you can see that the frame rates are quite high and the stuttering is really minimal and also vram usage is quite low actually i mean we are on the low preset but uh, it's really not too bad now i'm going to go back to the quality preset just see what kind of uh, frame rates we do get then we'll do dlss scaling and then we'll test frame generation as well Right, so on the ultra preset, let's call it 140 frames per second, right? And you can see our GP power is still sitting at around 240, 251, and our VRAM usage is sitting at 5 gig. <laughs> now it's, uh, once again, it's a small area, it might, uh, the VRAM might creep up the further along you play, but it's actually pretty decent so far. So 140 frames per second here. Going to enable the LSS quality and see what kind of performance bumps we get or frame rate bumps we get. Right, so DLSS quality took us from 140 frames per second to 177 frames per second here. A pretty decent bump and uh, our GPU power went down quite a bit, but our GPU usage is still sitting at 100%. Uh, I'll, I'll maybe make a follow-up video on GPU usages and GPU power or whatever. I, I did a CPU bottleneck video a little while ago and there still seems to be a little bit of confusion. confusion. Anyway, so 177 frames per second here. Going to go with DLSS balanced and I think that's... Uh, that's as low as I'm comfortable with at 1440p anyway. All right, so DLSS balanced uh, took this b up to 200 frames per second. <laughs> so it's getting comically high and still we are GPU bound. It's quite funny, actually. I, I do think um, whoever did the port, I'm not entirely sure if it was Nixus, but uh, it's actually, uh, it seems to be pretty well done so far. So 200 frames per second, there we are, to five gigabytes of VRAM used and uh, CPU usage of 25%. So I think I think it's pretty well done. All right, so I think that's enough of DLSS. Let's go back to DLAA and then we'll test frame generation and then we'll test frame generation with DLSS as well. Right, so I just enabled DLSS frame generation and I, I don't know, we, we were seeing 140 frames per second. We are still seeing around 140 frames per second. DLSS frame generation for some reason is not working that well in this game. And uh, let me just show you, I, I do have full screen enabled and I've seen that when full screen is not enabled, it usually has an issue, right? But let's let's just see if if it actually works on windowed. Right, so even on windowed mode, frame generation does not seem to work, unfortunately. DLSS 3 frame generation. Let's uh, go back to full screen and then we'll test FSR. Right, so FSR frame generation here, yeah, still with DLAA. So remember, it with FSR 3.1, the frame generation component is decoupled from the upscaling component of FSR, so you can use DLSS. XESS, TAA, whatever, and you can still enable FSR frame generation and getting 200 frames per second here. Yeah. So pretty decent. <laughs> um, like it's not even necessary really but for me personally. I mean, I, my monitor is a 150, sorry, 165 hertz panel with V Sync and G Sync and all that. And, uh, bells and whistles enabled. It's locked to 158 hertz. So the LSS quality gets me that without any frame generation. So, I mean, if you do have a 240 hertz panel, then I mean, this, this is great. All right, so just the baseline test again, DLSS quality are still at 1440p on the ultra preset, 176 frames per second here. I'll I'll do the, the change live this time and let's just see, I'm going to leave the frame rate counter up, which is actually quite nice about this game is it does show you what's going to change real time. So DLSS quality 
we were getting 170 ish frames per second. So let's just enable DLSS frame generation quickly. Right, and in the menu, you can see we're getting 198 frames per second here. Let's go back into the game and still around 170 frames per second. So the LSS3 frame generation, I think it's broken in this game. It's it's not helping at any setting at any resolution with <laughs> with or without upscaling enabled. All right, uh, that's a bummer, but uh, so it goes. All right, let's move on to 4K. All right, so we're back at 4K now on the Ultra preset again and uh, native DLAA. <laughs> I must say, that, so my second my, my second PC where my capture card is in is connected to a 4K monitor on the pass through. And so I've got a 4K monitor on my desk where I'm doing my benchmarking. And this game at 4K native with DLAA just looks amazing. I'm, I'm not going to lie, it really, really looks good. Now, the performance on the other hand is pretty good, right? So 80 frames per second, 4K native uh, on the ultra preset. And now you can see our GPU usage is sitting uh, still at 100%, but our GPU power is at around 275 watt. Still, our VRAM usage is sitting at around 9.3 gigabytes. So this is actually very, very good for, for people with the lower VRAM amount GPUs. All right, so 80 frames per second here. I'm going to, once again, limit the lows and or take away the lows. Just do some preset scanning again, and then some DLSS scanning, and then just some FSR and DLSS frame gener generation, but a little bit shorter this time. All right, so in this same spot, we were getting around 82 frames per second. Now we're getting 91 frames per second on the high preset. The 82 frames per second was with the ultra preset. So let's drop this to medium. And the medium preset netted as another 10 frames per second, give or take. We are sitting at 104 frames per second here. And you can see our GPU power is <laughs> dropping down with each uh, preset that we drop down. And our CPU usage is very low, sitting at 16%, 15% CPU usage, yeah. All right, uh, let's try the low preset and then we'll do some DLSS scaling. All right, and once again, the low preset netted us around 20 frames per second here. And uh, we are sitting with 127, 128 frames per second, so slightly more than 20 frames per second. Pretty decent 4K 120 on the low preset um, at native resolution. Remember that it's, uh, I think the, the game runs very well. As I said, it might, it might become more heavy in later areas of the game, but we'll have to see. I'll have to see. <laughs> All right, uh, going to switch it back to ultra where we're getting around 80 frames per second. Then I'll be playing with the DLSS settings a bit. Right, so still on the ultra preset, and we went from 83 frames per second at native using DLA 8 to 126 frames per second using DLSS quality. And uh, this is impressive. I mean, <laughs> on the ultra preset, just, uh, I mean, now it's rendering internally at 1440p and then upscaling to 4K, but 120 frames per second, there you go. If you want a 4K 120 uh, experience, then this, these are the settings to use. Now dropping this down to DLSS balanced, we gained another 20-ish frames per second, so 145 frames per second. And uh, I mean, it's a pretty decent bump to our performance or to our frame rate without being that big a uh, loss to our uh, internal resolution. So let's try performance, which is 1080p upscale to 4K. I'm not the biggest fan of, of DLSS performance even at 4K, but uh, I know some people don't mind it, so we got to test it. All right, and dropping this down to performance didn't really help that much with our frame rate. We went from 145 frames per second to 156 frames per second, so I don't think it's really worth it in that regard. Uh, performance is, as I said, upscaling from 1080p to 4K, and you do you only get a little bit of extra frame rate, so it's really, in my personal opinion, probably not worth it. All right, let's uh, drop this back to the DLSS quality with ultra preset, and then we'll test frame generation. And then I think it's the end of the video. All right, so I just want to do one more control. So we've got DLSS set your quality on the ultra preset running at 4K. I know everything is on the screen here, but I'm repeating it to myself so that I do know which settings I've used when I edit. Uh, anyway, 
so 128 frames per second here without any frame generation going to enable DLSS frame generation just so we do have a baseline to compare it with and our performance is slightly lower so we went from 128 frames per second to 125 frames per second okay so let's not talk about performance when we use DLSS or frame generation our frame rate went lower <laughs> which is, uh, I don't know, it just, it's broken, right? So let's hope for a patch. But until then, you are more than welcome to use FSR frame generation with DLSS, which gives you the better image quality as well as the, the better frame generation technique, um, especially in this game at the moment, right? So let's, uh, let's see what FSR frame generation can do here for us. All right, and there we have it, 168, 170-ish frames per second. I'm just going to do a run here quickly and... I mean, that, that's actually a pretty decent bump to our frame rate. We, we gained 40 frames per second from 125 frames per second to 165 frames per second. Just doing a run here to see if the frame time graph stays smooth. It should. I mean, if it's our 3.1 frame generation is actually pretty decent. I do prefer it in the games that support it. Uh, I, I do use the LSS. For instance, in Ghost of Tsushima, Ratchet and Clank, Spider-Man Remastered. I use the LSS upscaling and then FSR 3 frame generation as it is it generates more frames right right and it looks pretty much identical and in this game it actually works all right so if you want 160 hertz 160 frame rate uh, then 4k dialysis quality with fsr3 frame generation bob's your uncle all right so i think that's going to be the end of this video hope you guys enjoyed it if you did hit that like button hit that subscribe button and as always we hope to see you in the next one